Hello, on this episode of RC Plane Maker, I'm going to show you how to make carbon fiber landing gear. I recently purchased a Yak 54 kit that came with this wire landing gear. Unfortunately, this landing gear is just not up to the task for the airplane. Other than that, I like the airplane. I've flown it about four times, and every time I've flown it, I've had a failure of the landing gear, even though my landings weren't that bad. So what we're going to do today is build a carbon fiber landing gear to replace this wired gear. So here we are, time to get started. The first thing we have to do is we have to make a mold for our landing gear. This is an inch and a half thick foam that we uh, buy for a, from the uh, local hardware store, used for home insulation. And I've cut out a piece that's going to be the outside dimensions of my mold. I've made a pattern of my uh, gear legs. I need to draw that on the mold now. What we're going to make is a uh, male and female mold. It's going to be, uh, our layup's going to be clamped up in there. So let me draw that on here right now. Flip it over here and draw the other side. There you go. I've also already drip, drawn it on the uh, reverse side because I'm going to have to flip it over when I cut it in the bandsaw. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some initial cuts with the bandsaw. So we'll go do that now. Here we are at the bandsaw. Now we could cut this out by the handsaw all the way, but what the heck, I have a, I have a bandsaw, so let's uh, make the initial cuts this way. Now we'll make the rest of the cuts by hand. So the landing gear we're uh, replacing is the landing gear on my uh, Yak 54. And we can look at the landing gear and see that it is raked forward. In other words, this goes straight up into the fuselage and the landing gear actually rakes forward from it when it comes out of the bottom of the fuselage. So in order to facilitate that, I made a little cutting jig that I sanded the angle into and that will allow us to guide our saw when we're uh, when we're making this cut here I gotta clean it first there. so I'll just take this get jig and hot glue it on here doesn't have to be uh, much glue because it's just temporary we'll take it off after we get done Lined up right. Now we'll get a saw, a little coping saw here. We'll use the angle of this block to guide our saw. successful I was. Yeah, I have to do a little recess shaping, but it's pretty close. Take this off. And uh, a little sanding block here. And 
and that should be good. of my landing gear a little more scale like I'm gonna make them uh, round and slightly streamlined shape rather than uh, rather than flat like you see for a normal carbon fiber gear this is what most people are used to thinking of when they see a carbon fiber gear which actually has a, a flat profile this is a gear I made for a smaller airplane than I have so in order to facilitate that we need to, we need to, uh, I made myself a little block that I made a, like a half airfoil shape that I covered with sandpaper. And this block will, is a positioning block that will position that slot in the right, uh, And I got to do the same in the uh, inside of the this this half of the mold here. There we are. Now we have two uh, slots that, uh, if we did it right, they'll match up with each other. And now we got to do a little dressing up. I want to, I want to take and uh, break this edge on the rear here because we'll actually have extra material that. We'll lay off on that side, so I'll just take a little piece of sandpaper and just kind of break that edge. Now, if we were going to make a bunch of these landing gears, we we would of course make some uh, permanent tooling, but this is what we call soft tooling. And it's basically just going to be for one-time use. In fact, this this mold will more than likely get destroyed when we uh, pull apart from it. You can see how easy easily this sands. That's why I like this particular type of foam for making uh, this type of soft tooling. And this is just kind of done by eye here. So to give the final part a pleasing appearance. So there we go. So when we lay our part up, we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to put some clamps on it to clamp this all together. So in order to do that, I need to hollow out the center of this so I can insert my clamps. So first I'm gonna just uh, throw some holes in here to uh, Make it easier to cut. Then I need a saw. I'll take a saw. And basically, cut out the center section.
There we go. Discard that. Like to mark the front and rear of these pieces so I don't get them backwards. That always messes up your day. So there's a piece. Now we can put a clamp in here, a couple clamps in there, maybe a clamp up here when we get our, our uh, material in there. So the next thing we need to do is we need to keep the mold from doing this when we're when we're uh, trying to put our part in there. In other words, keep them lined up with each other, the two halves. So to do that, I made some uh, little short popsicle sticks here. I'm going to put about four of them on each side here. Just use a little hot glue. Stick those on one at a time. There. Now theoretically, we should slide together, just like that. Now they can't. Now it can't shift back and forth while we're make it a lot easier. <clears throat> if we just laid the. Uh, carbon fiber up on this foam, it would be a permanent bond to it, and uh, we'd have a heck of a time finishing it up. So the first thing we need to do is coat this, coat the mold here with something that we can get to uh, easily release from the carbon fiber. So what I'm going to use is just regular clear packing tape. Just apply this to the mold. And when we come up here to the end of the slots, we have to slit it a little bit. As much as we can, we want to avoid getting any wrinkles in it because those would transfer into the actual part. I'm going to take So now we'll proceed around the whole thing and uh, apply tape, just like we did here. Okay, we're back. We've got the uh, mold now all lined with uh, packing tape. It's a nice smooth surface. If in some spots it doesn't stick down, it's not really a big deal. Once we clamp it together, it'll all conform to the mold. The big thing is you don't have any major wrinkles. Now we're going to have to uh, apply a mold release so that 
once the part is cured, we can actually get the tape off of the part. Epoxy is a very good glue, very good adhesive, and so it, it wants to uh, make this part of the laminate, this tape. So we'll just put some mold release on it so it'll peel right off when we get done. Now you can use commercial mold release, you can use like Canumba Rax, but I prefer to use hairspray. Uh, it actually makes a pretty decent uh, mold release and uh, shopping for it's real easy. I just, you know, liberated it from my wife's makeup cabinet. Put a good layer of it on there. Now we'll let that dry and the mold's actually ready to, ready to go. So when we come back, we'll be uh, actually starting the layup.